Hi, I'm David Gross with Condi Systems, back with you to share a little bit of my wisdom for sublimation success. This video is all about the bypass tray for printers like the SG800, 7100, those kind of what we call the A3 printers. For whatever reason, I apparently never did a video explaining how to use and install the bypass tray. Now, why would you want to buy the bypass tray? I think there's two big reasons. Number one is it gives you an extra paper source. And number two is it actually makes the printer print wider and, of course, longer. And so it's a very valuable accessory. And I would say almost everyone that has, say, a, as old a printer as the GX7000, the GXE 7700, the SG7100, and now the SG800 would benefit by buying the bypass tray. So what I have over here is 13 by 21 paper. So that's how big uh, a cut sheet paper we have for this printer, and that's pretty good. That, that will come darn close to maxing out, say, my favorite heat press, the, S, the uh, George Knight DK20S. So what I want to do in this video is walk you through installing it. It is ridiculously easy, but many people ask for it, and I'm happy to, to be part of that. So first is you'll obviously need a bypass tray to take it out of the, um, the printer. Um, and so it's going to attach on the back side, so let's turn the printer around and I'll show you how it attaches. Okay, first thing I want you to note here is this is the electrical kind of connection to the bypass tray. Notice how it's moving around here, um, and so your printer is not broke, that's how it should be, because when the tray comes along, it needs a little wiggle room to, uh, to navigate. So, um, first thing to note is on the bypass tray, is you've got little push buttons on each side and those are the release mechanism so when you get ready you push those down and we're gonna mate and we work it and that connector goes right in here and then we release and it is locked in place it is that easy so I want to show you one other part that's gonna appear with the bypass tray and you'll if, if you don't watch my videos you'll simply call and say what's this and I'm going to tell you what it is. You're going to be a little surprised. But the Japanese folks that designed this printer decided that this was a, um, a little heavy load and that there was some rare potential for the printer to tilt backward. There's not, of course. And so this is the stabilizing foot. And so literally this goes right here. And then you've got a little screw. It goes right into the little hole there and it keeps the printer from falling backwards, even though I don't see how it could possibly fall backwards. Um, so just for good measure, go ahead and, and attach it, and you can tighten it with a screwdriver, and you've got it. That's it. We put the tray on the printer. I did it when the printer's turned on, and I did it to remind me of a point, and that is if you ever take the uh, tray off or on, you've got to cycle power in order for the printer to see the tray. So what we're going to do next is we're going to turn the power off. We hold it down for a couple of seconds and let go. And then light a flash and then after it's off we're going to power it back on and this time it will now see the bypass tray. So a uh, few people get caught into this trap. They say the bypass tray is on there but I can't print to it. Well, if you've ever messed with the bypass tray, that could be the cause. All right, so it's powering back on now. And what we're going to do is I'm going to print a test page that will let me know whether or not the printer actually sees the bypass tray. So it's just a little report that tells you all the accessories installed in the printer. So it should be finished in just a second with our warm up. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into the test print menu and do that test print. So what I'm going to do is I'll just tell you the menus and what they look like because it's super easy. We'll push the menu key and then we're going to push the down arrow key till we get to list test and then we'll push the enter key twice. One, 
too. And it'll print our report and then I'll show you on camera what it'll look like for the bypass tray. It does two pages, one for the printer and then one for the internet. And uh, so I'll ask the camera to come in and I'll circle on here what the bypass tray is. Okay, this is what's called our system summary and the bypass tray is listed right there. So we know the printer can see it. We are good to go. Um, I wanna walk you through just a simple test of the bypass tray um, using some plain letter paper. And by the way, when you do put your sublimation paper into the bypass tray, the print side goes up or forward. So that's where it goes. So we're gonna put it in here. And the way the tray works is it has these little sliders, so you frame it. And then, of course, in the back, you can extend the tray out. All right, so um, over these many years of viewing these printers, I've only found one way that I can print from the bypass tray without having it hooked to a computer. And so we're gonna walk you through that uh, pretty easy. And so we're gonna push the menu key, and then we're gonna push the down arrow key till we get to our maintenance menu. We're gonna push the enter key, and then we're gonna go down till we get to registration. Now, normally we never go to registration. Registration is sort of the, the starting position of print on the paper, and it's just not something we've ever had to do um, because sublimation is not critical where it starts um, for, for our kind of thing. So after we get to registration, we'll push the enter key, and it's gonna ask me a question. It'll say print test pattern, and we're gonna say yeah. And what it's gonna do is it next asks me which tray to print from, and of course, we're gonna choose the bypass tray. Push the enter key, and there we go. So this printed from our bypass tray, so everything is working. Now at this stage with the tray, it's time to go to your computer, and we can remote in, of course, and help you, and to set up the bypass tray in the print driver. It's important that we do that because chances are you're gonna to wanna to use some of the we'll call them sublimation centric paper sizes like 13 by 21 and 13 by 19. So those need to be set up in the driver as those are not standard paper sizes. Then after you get done with that, when you go to print, we can create presets for you that simply say, hey, I wanna use, you know, like Condi ICC bypass 13 by 21. Use 13 by 21 paper, use the bypass tray, um, and everything works. So if you have any questions, of course, we, we certainly can assist with you in the setup of the bypass tray. So we're finished. I hope this has been informative. To load the big paper, you're obviously going to spread it apart here. You'll make it even taller and then simply load it. Um, be careful that um, you don't put too much paper in here and um, you're good. And I don't think it goes up any further than that, but um, some people, I've seen them over the years, they'll put a little uh, piece of cardboard, stick it up so you've got a very high um, way of doing it. Obviously, the, the bypass tray takes a little bit of the depth, increases the depth of the printer, but I recommend you get the bypass tray. It's very useful for growing your business. And so this has been David Gross with Condi Systems. Thank you for watching.